over three quarters of our planet are covered by oceans. Their biodiversity is unmatched and over 80% of all the living species call the ocean their home. But beneath the beauty of our ocean waters lurks a nightmare worse than any Jaws movie. An issue that affects all of us in this room, but not many of us are aware about. Every day, massive numbers of fish are being snatched out of the ocean waters faster than they can be replenished. We are losing species as well as entire ecosystems. Today, I'm going to inform you about overfishing. A few semesters ago, I took an oceanography class here at Fullerton, and it opened my eyes about the crisis. I'm going to explain to you a few things I learned in this class, including exactly what overfishing is and how bottom trawling is a cause. I will also explore the harmful effects of the current solution to overfishing, which is farm-raised fish. So we have all this talk about overfishing, but what is it exactly? Overfishing is when so many fish are caught that the population can't reproduce enough to replace them. In the documentary short film, Can the Oceans Keep Up with the Hunt?, it is revealed that during the last 50 years, over 90% of the big fish in our oceans have been depleted, and almost 80% of the world's fish populations are fully to over depleted or in a state of collapse. A major international scientific study released in November 2006 in the journal Science found that about one-third of all fishing stocks worldwide have collapsed, with the collapse being defined as a decline to less than 10% of their maximum observed abundance, and that if current trends continue, all fish stocks will, worldwide will collapse within 50 years. The reason that this is happening is because of technology. Instead of the single, single fisherman with a single pole and a line and a hook that we used to think of in the past, we now are looking at huge sonar-equipped fishing vessels that will far outmatch nature, nature's ability to reproduce fish. Worldwide, we are seeing fishing fleets that are two to three times larger than they need to be. And one of the main causes of fishing is the use of bottom trawling off of these massive ships. Bottom trawling is said to be the world's most destructive fishing practice, and many species are in danger because of it. Greenpeace.org defies bottom trawling as dragging huge heavy nets along the seafloor, and according to Greenpeace, large rubber wheels attached to these nets move along the bottom and trash nearly everything in their path. Included in the things that are trashed are sensitive ecosystems, which take years to replenish. And the UN Secretary General reported in 2006 that 95% of damage to the seamount ecosystems worldwide, which are essentially underwater mountains, is caused by deep sea bottom trawling. Even though that may seem like a large problem, by, far, by perhaps the largest problem of bottom trawling is bycatch. Bycatch is the unintended capture of fish and other species in these nests, which is then thrown back and never even makes it to the market. Most of the time, this catch is either dead or on its way there. And 21 million tons of marine life is discarded as waste each year worldwide because they were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that is equal to four times the entire U.S. catch in a single year. And although it varies, bottom trawling for shrimp is said to be among the worst. Shrimp trawls catch only 2% of the world's catch of all fish by weight, but produce over one-third of the total bycatch. Five pounds of unwanted marine life are discarded for every one pound of shrimp caught. And due to these devastating effects of bottom trawling, many nations are resorting to farming fish. However, these farm-raised fish also contribute to overfishing, and not only that, but they can also have harmful effects on the people that consume them. Instead of taking pressures off the ocean, farming popular and profitable fish like carnivorous salmon and bluefin tuna places its own pressures on the ocean. Small trash fish are still caught in mass amounts from the ocean to feed these farmed fish. At least three pounds of fish are required for every one pound of weight gain in salmon, and 17 pounds of fish are required for every one pound of weight gain in bluefin tuna. And because the, be because the food being fed to them is made from this concentrated trash meal, it can contain high concentrations of toxins. Farm-raised salmon sold in the supermarkets to us is actually dangerous to eat. According to an exhaustive study done by Scientific American magazine, the farm-raised salmon, which is sold where we would all purchase it in the supermarkets, 
has about 10 times more toxic residues than wild fresh salmon. And included in these residues are dioxin, which is a known proven cancer-causing cancer agent, and mercury, which is known to reduce the IQs of unborn children. And on the other hand, wild salmon have fewer toxins because of their natural diet. They eat crustaceans, which have little to no toxins, and give the wild salmon its natural pink color. The natural pink color that you see the salmon in the supermarkets is from added dyes. And the causes, effects, and current solutions of overfishing are all very devastating. Between farm-raised fish, which are harming to the environment as well as humans, and bottom trawling, the fish really don't stand a chance. Our oceans are severely under stress and at risk of collapse. It's up to us to save them and the marine life inside of them. This is a global issue that is only bound to get worse with the way that our uh, population is rising. Individually, we can help by keeping ourselves informed on the current issues of overfishing and also by researching and purchasing sustainable fish. The Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch Program provides guidance on the sustainability of certain fish species and you can find information on their website about it. We have the power as individuals to save the last bit of fit, fish remaining in our oceans and bounce back from this crisis. We just have to make the choice to do so. Thank you. All right, Ashley, all the content stuff is fine. I like the uh, material that you use for your attention device and what you have at the conclusion. Your speech does border a little bit on being a persuasive presentation more than an informative speech, but there's substantial informative material in it, so I'm, it's not that big a deal. Uh, the presentation issues, uh, all, everything on the paralinguistics was was really solid. It's easy to hear you. I think you've got good variety and emphasis on particular points. It sounds polished when you're delivering it. It flows very smoothly. Sometimes it seems a little quick, but uh, I didn't think that it was uh, consistently that way, and so I, I think you're in good shape there. On the visual factors, uh, everything is, is solid, uh, but there there's always room for improvement. For example, the gestures, you have a couple of limited indicators. I think you could be more animated there. The same thing with your facial expressions. You look up and uh, you are expressive, but not uh, you know, particularly animated. And this audience is actually a fairly intimate one. You're close enough to us that we all get a chance to, to see you, and I think you, need, you could connect a little bit better. The one thing that I thought was noticeable, and I didn't think that there were other anxiety issues at all, but it seemed like the longer the speech went on, the further back from us you got. It just seemed like you were back and away from us uh, during the presentation instead of stepping up and engaging us a little bit. And I think that might uh, be something that you could work on. And it's just, like I said, being more active in the speech. I, you're trying to get everything correct. You've got the language that's really polished. And working on those kinds of things, sometimes people forget to say, you know, I, I need to connect with the audience. So you, you've got the the spit and polish, but you also need the personality and the relationship there. All right, thank you.